But let's get into probably the biggest one of the weekend and biggest one oh, of yeah. the calendar year, the Indianapolis 500, the 105th running of this historic event on the Yard of Bricks. Just uh, your overall thoughts maybe coming into this weekend, Kyle. It's been uh, fairly interesting to see the, the practice times and whatnot. We just had Carb Day wrap up uh, before we recorded this. So we have a little bit more of a, a closer sense to what we could see in terms of weather and uh, who's looking good after the final practice session of the weekend going into the Sunday race uh, for the ultimate prize and who gets to uh, drink the milk. Yeah, I am so, so, so pumped for this Indy 500. Not only is it back in May, you've got a bunch of fans back as well. You've got a really, really exciting grid of former winners, veterans, and some really good cars. You've got Honda kind of looking like the the favorite for this weekend, but the Chevys with better fuel mileage. So if you get to a fuel mileage situation, could yeah. we see something like that? Got a couple interesting rookies in the field, specifically Scott McLaughlin, who looks like he's the leading Penske as well. So there's so many great different storylines, fun things to watch this weekend. I'm so, so pumped because as per usual with the Indy 500, it's a pretty wide open field. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can look at the race playing out, favorites, different winner picks. There's a lot of really, really fun stuff this weekend. Yeah, we've seen track position become an even more important part of this race, specifically yeah. in the last couple of years. So qualifying was of added emphasis. And we have Scott Dixon on pole there for Chip Ganassi racing. And he's looked kind of he's kind of been the clear cut favorite in terms of practice speeds and qualifying and everything that we've seen led carb day as well today. So it just seems like that car is very much on rails and it's going to be tough for the competition to beat him. And he's out for revenge again this year after finishing second last year to Takuma Sato and that really kind of crazy end of the race before it kind of uh, finished under the red flag, unfortunately. So hopefully we don't get that ha to get that to happen this time around. We hopefully see a green flag run to the checkered flags. Um, yeah, like you said, we've got some interesting names in this one. Juan Pablo Montoya, great to see him back in the Indianapolis 500 grid. No Fernando Alonso, of course, this season for obvious reasons. So I'll take Juan Pablo Montoya and uh, and switch him out for Fernando Alonso. But uh, lots of cool things. Simona Di Silvestro made the Indianapolis yes. 500 field as well. So that was awesome to see. She is starting from uh, the back end of the grid in last place, but still an amazing accomplishment for that team to make the field. Will Power almost missed out on the Indianapolis 500 uh, field after a uh, very, you know, <laughs> pretty sketchy qualifying run there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it was nip and tuck for him for quite some time, but he's starting uh, at the back end on the last row as well in 30 seconds. So uh, he looked good in the last uh, in the last practice session though. So he could be a big mover throughout the race. It's going to take a lot for him to get up by the front at the front by the end of this one, but watch out for willpower. Of course, a premier veteran of this series. He could be one to watch for sure. And just, it's just a solid overall grid to what could be a spectacular running of the Indianapolis 500. Tony Kanon up there in fifth position for qualifying for uh, the obvious Jimmy Johnson kind of replacement for this weekend. Jimmy Johnson not running the ovals there for Chip Ganassi racing in the 48 car. So Tony Kanon, a, you know, open wheel vet is uh, going to be definitely one to watch. And that would be an amazing storyline if oh, he could end up winning this he's one. He's quick too, man. Yeah, he looks really good. And then one, one thing on Juan Pablo Montoya, of course, he is the one that chose chocolate milk as his drink if he wins this one. <laughs> that would be absolutely awesome if he could pull that off and I see some chocolate milk uh, at the end of this one. But uh, anybody that you're really looking forward to watching this weekend, specifically, Kyle, anybody that really stands out to you that could be a potential upset uh, surprise or just overall, who are you looking at to uh, just for entertainment purposes at the Indianapolis 500? Yeah, so I think the big one that stands out kind of for both of those is Elio Castroneves in the uh, mm -hmm. 06 Meyer Shank car. The Hondas have looked really fast. There's some Andretti ties as well to that car. This is also the first time at the Indy 500 that Castroneves isn't with Team Penske. So yeah. this is a very different situation for him. Looked very strong in the Fast 9 as well in qualifying. I think he's going to be a fascinating name to watch uh, throughout this race as kind of the leading Meyer Shank car. Uh, at this Indy 500. Other than that, you're probably looking at some of the Chevys and, and how they kind of mix into uh, the overall conversation for the win, whether that's the Ed Carpenter duel of Ed Carpenter himself and the Indy GP winner of Rena's VK as well, who's looking to do the Simon Pagano thing of 
win the Grand Prix and the 500 in the same weekend. Of course, didn't get the poll award there for that one. Yeah. Um, other than that, looking down the field, I think the other big question is what happens with those Penske cars? They didn't look great in terms of single lap or qualifying speed. Scott McLaughlin was your leading qualifier for that group of 17th. You had Will Power barely make it in on bump day in 32nd. Simona Di Silvestro, kind of the, the extra Penske car uh, with, with some ties there, the Penske prepared car the last car into the grid. So don't know what to expect from them, whether it's going to be a strategy play, whether they have maybe some more speed in the middle of the pack, I think it's probably more to a strategy play for Penske, but I think those are probably the two uh, either upset or, wow, or storylines that I'm watching for Castro Neves, uh, just because of obviously the storyline with Meyer Shank, uh, a smaller team versus some of the others. Honda's look really good. First race at this, uh, first any 500 without Penske um, and then the Penske's as well and see what they do here as well. Of course, you've got your Juan Pablo on toys and everything like that as well. A uh, Ferrucci coming back for the Indy 500 after yeah. he's been fantastic so far in his career. But I think those are the ones to watch. And then you've got kind of your front runners. You've got your Chip Ganassi. You've got your Andretti. I think those are probably the two is going to come down to at the end of the day. We'll see how things play out between those two. But I think that's kind of the, the overall kind of look at things here. Are you thinking, uh, what, what are you thinking in terms of first time winner? Do you think we see that this weekend or do we have a repeat winner? Not to see your prediction per se, but mm -hmm. what, uh, if you were to weigh your odds, are you going with the veterans or, or are you going with kind of the, uh, the younger or the youth with IndyCar here with the first time winner? So I think there's, there's three or four uh, that I have as kind of like my uh, like top group of, of picks. And of those, I think three or four of those are past winners. I think that there's, uh, a couple of guys that could look to potentially win their first Indy 500, but usually as is the case with the Indy 500, it's the veterans that usually come out to play. Um, and, and I think that's going to be a lot of the case. I think there will be a couple of those uh, first time potential winners up in the mix, but I'm, I'm looking at your, what Scott Dixon, obviously uh, as the pole award winner, but also Castro Neves with that Meyer Shank car, Alex Rossi, Takuma Sato, of course, who didn't have the greatest qualifying, but does have that Honda power, looks good uh, in overall pace. Uh, I think those are probably some of those guys that you're looking at to be your true, true favorites as your past winners as well. Yeah, I uh, I could definitely agree with that one. It's yeah. just a great overall event. Like the, the having fans back at this one's going to be so so cool, and it's yeah. going to be the largest spectator event that we've seen since the pandemic's hit. So that's an added bonus for this and. You know, it's the fact that it's like barely at half capacity is just an insane thing <laughs> to, so to comprehend. Big, uh, yeah. But there's so many different storylines really to watch here. Uh, the veterans are going to be very tough to beat, but the youth has been so strong to start this season as well. We've seen Rena's VK, yeah. Alex Palo, Colton Herta all up in a victory lane so far. So could be so interesting kind of dynamics between the veterans and the youth. And, it, you know, we've seen it kind of yeah. with NASCAR over the last couple of years with the youth movement really coming in. We're starting to see it a bit more now in IndyCar and these guys getting these prime rides with, you know, your Chip Ganassi's, Penske's, Andretti's and, and whatnot. And they're really starting to take it to these guys that have, you know, been the dominant force for many, many years. So curious to see how it all plays out for the Indianapolis 500 should be a fun one. It's going to be starting, I believe at 1245 Eastern, if I'm not mistaken yes. for the green flag. So uh, going to be uh, right up early in the morning for myself here on the West coast, but going to be prime time out there on the East coast for yourself. And uh, I'll be getting up no matter what time it is for the oh, Indianapolis. I can't wait, man. I can't but, wait. Uh, I, I, anything else you want to add before we look at our winner picks and uh, round out the episode? Sure. Uh, one last thing um, that I think is fun to add as well is Pietro Fittipaldi uh, returning the Fittipaldi name in Indy car, Indy 500, making his first start here in the Indy 500 in that 51 Dale coin uh, Rick yep. Ware car. That's usually driven on the road courses by Roman Grosjean. Very interesting that it is those two names that ended up sharing this seat, just given everything that happened at the end of last year yeah. in the formula one season, but interested to see how he does. I hope he can have a nice clean race and maybe pick up a top 10 there Honda power as well. So should be the favorable uh, engine supplier there. Uh, other than that, James Hinchcliffe in the Andretti again, of course, got to support the Canadian boys. Um, not the greatest qualifying effort down in 16th, but Andretti's do look good. We'll see how things play it with strategy. So hoping for a nice run for Hinch here this weekend. 
Yes, that should be, uh, a, you know, we got to always cheer on our Canadians. It's, of course, it's, of course. It's the rightful thing to do on this show. But let's round up the episode with our Indianapolis 500 winner yes. picks. And you Come have on. the first pick as well. Yeah, because you got first pole position. I mean, honestly, I'd rather have. Hey, you know what? You, need, other... you need all the help you get with all of these points, I got to say. Thanks. Thanks for that. Appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, Takuma Sato, the defending race winner of this yep. one as well. Yep. Uh, hasn't quite gotten the full year to celebrate as an Indianapolis 500 winner. Obviously, this coming back in late August last year when this race was uh, run in 2020. So uh, we'll see if he can go out there and uh, do the double. I don't see that happening this weekend just based off of the pace that I've seen from him so far. I think it's a bit of a long shot, but uh, there's a lot of great candidates up at the front. Scott Dixon is clearly the favorite coming into this one, not only for his history at this track and being a former winner here, but how fast he's been uh, throughout the weeks leading up to this incredible event. I would love to go with Graham Rahal. He ran well here last year, but the the pace just hasn't quite been there in qualifying and single car speed. So uh, I can't quite go with him. As I mentioned off the top, track position is an extremely important part of the Indianapolis 500. It seems lately it's been difficult to overtake. So uh, drivers have been very, very strategic in terms of how they want to place their cars going into the turns. And we saw that in practice today with Santino Frucci and Connor Daly having a little bit of a squabble uh, for I think Connor Daly was a little bit out of uh, his depth in terms of making a claim like that, but uh, I'll let bygones be good bygones. But for my uh, Indianapolis 500 winner pick, I'm going to go with a former race winner for this one. I'm going to say veteran okay. takes, uh, takes the youth here and I'm going to the Andretti Autosport camp for this one. Okay. So it's a former winner pick. Ryan Hunter Ray Ooh, gets okay. it done. Yeah, I'm going. He hasn't had a great season so far. I can see this being the tipping point in terms of trying to get a little bit momentum back. I remember watching that DHL yellow bright car yeah. when he won it a couple of years. It's been a couple more than a couple of years ago, but 2014. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's been quite some time. But I think Ryan Hunter Ray has the tools to get it done. I like that lucky number seven starting position. He could be a, a nice force to be reckoned with here. And I think he could do it with a little bit of help from his teammates as well. So Ryan Hunter Ray wins the Indianapolis 500 in 2021. I like that pick. And uh, I, I'm going to go a little bit different with it. I'm going to give you my top five favorites leading up to my overall. Pick. Okay. Okay. Uh, number five in terms of my favorites. I've still got Takuma Sato. Still got that Honda Power RLL didn't have the greatest qualifying runs, but I still think that they're going to be threats for the win, just given how consistent they've been over yeah. the last handful of years at the Indy 500. So defending winner Takuma Sato, he's my number five overall. Number four is actually, in fact, Ryan Hunter Ray there. Number four, um, quiet so far uh, over the entire month of May, but that's kind of what you like from some past winners. Consistent. Not flashy, just kind of in the conversation there uh, and quietly ended up being the number two qualifying in Dreddy Car as well. So very interested to see how his race goes. Number three, maybe a little bit surprisingly, Scott Dixon. I, I think that he's got the leading car Interesting. Th uh, in terms of being out front in clean air. I'm a little hesitant as to what happens if he drops back a couple of places, if he can make those up. I think last year they kind of galaxy brained it a little bit, trying to save as much fuel as they could and ended up costing themselves the win when they gave Takuma Sato the, the lead and uh, either didn't get it back or didn't have the opportunity to with the late caution and all that kind of stuff. I think this year we'll see them just kind of stay out front as long as they can and see maybe how the race plays out in that regard. So Scott Dixon is number three for me. Number two, even though we didn't make the fast nine, he's just always in the conversation and that's Alexander Rossi. I think that they're starting to maybe trend in a better direction. Indy 500 has always been a great place for him. Of course, the upset victory in the hundredth running. Um, but I got to say, I, I really like him this weekend, but that leads up to the number one. And of course Can I've named you got here. I've named a couple of Andretti cars so far. I do think that they're the favorites overall, I do think we get a first time winner and not just that the youngest winner in Indy 500 history, wow. Colton Herta gets it done for Andretti. Uh, I really, really like him this, the entire month of May. He's been consistently at the top of the charts qualified P2. I think he's got a great race car. I think he's got a great car in single uh, run kind of out front speed. So Colton Herta, I'm going to say gets it done this weekend to become the youngest Indy 500 winner of all time. Colton I love Hurt. it. 
I love it. I think it's a great pick. I, I, I uh, was definitely looking at him. You know, I, I just have a, such a tough time. I think it's just mentally for me. I don't know why. With going yep. with 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 youth, first of all, and second of all, going with guys that start so high up. I just have something, you know, I, I have like a, this sweet spot from the kind of seventh to 12th range that I really like yeah, to look at makes there. Sense. They're the guys that co- don't quite have that, you know, boom, one lap or, you know, the four average lap speed, but they're just so consistently good and, and they could be just a th- threat to win and they're so uh, ready to pounce at any time. They're really strategic in terms of timing their moves correctly that's what really comes down to it, Indy. The veteran experience usually does yep. pay off, but that's why Colton Herta, we could definitely see him being the youngest winner uh, for, for the Indianapolis 500 this weekend, and that would be a great, great story. Adding He's to got a opportunity. damn good shot at it, I yep. got to say. The Andretti's look really good. He's looked really good so far. He's had some bad luck so far in his Indy 500 career, but um, I believe this man. is his... I believe this is his last shot to to get it done, given his birthday. He's uh, 21 right now. The the record is uh, Troy Rutman, who did it when he was 22 and some change. So uh, mm-hmm. if he's going to get that record, this is the year to do it. Um, he's got Brian Herter there, who's an excellent strategist as well. So we'll see if that comes into play. Um, but I, I, I just, I'm just feeling good about Herter this season. He, he's got the win uh, at St. Pete. He had all the IndyCar rumors, or, or sorry, the F1 rumors, uh, or, or just kind of conversation as to whether he could make that move into the future. Guess that extension with Andretti. I'm just feeling a lot of positive vibes from that 26. I, I think that this might be the time for Mr. Colton Herta. Good. You, you've, you've, you swung me. Uh, I, uh, you made a good <laughs> case. Good about him, man. You made a good case. Uh, I'm really Regardless, looking forward to it. I think it's going to be an excellent race. Um, even if you're like a casual motorsports fan or you don't really watch any racing, if you're going to watch one race at all throughout the year, I think the Indy 500 has got to be it because you're talking about fast cars. You're talking about drivers on the edge the entire time. And most of the time you're talking about close finishes as well It's the perfect trifecta that you could possibly hope for out of a race. Oh yeah. And it's one of the crown jewels in the entirety of motorsports as well. Yeah, that's just a little bit of an added bonus there. Maybe tune yeah, in for this one. Right. Uh, should be a good one. We've got a great all-star lineup in terms of the broadcast as oh, well. Yeah. Um, great to see, you know, some of the NASCAR guys coming over for this. Steve Letarte we have there, Jimmy Johnson, Danica Patrick, all those uh, familiar faces coming over there for the broadcast. So pre-race should be interesting. Obviously, the race should be interesting. And Sunday overall should be interesting because we have the Coca-Cola 600 yeah. to round that all out. Unfortunately, we don't have Monaco this time around to grade it the, to make it the greatest day in motorsports, but we'll take what we can get it's here. still pretty close it's still pretty close <laughs> but uh any final thoughts before we wrap up yet another episode here Kyle? uh just quickly on the uh on the media side of things mike tarico one of the best hosts in the business of yeah. course we'll be back with the indy 500 and the fact that you've got mike tarico jimmy johnson and danica patrick all kind of on a panel together sign me up because that's incredible but um just so so pumped for this weekend indy 500 as i've said multiple times is my favorite race of the calendar so really looking forward to that one with all the storylines, all the big names involved. I'm super, super excited for that race. And then the Coke 600 as well. I know some people kind of get tired of it a little bit, given the, the race length and how long it is, but I do appreciate the history of it. The fact that it is a NASCAR crown jewel, the endurance it takes to drive a race car for that long on the edge yeah. uh, with so many close competitors with this 550 horsepower package as well. Uh, restarts in are nuts. theory keeping things closer restarts are nuts we'll see what happens come the end of the race but uh very much looking forward to this entire weekend of water sports absolutely make sure to follow us on instagram at the green flag pod as well as twitter at the green flag pod subscribe to the youtube channel leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it we'd really really appreciate it we're closing in on 100 subscribers so thank Getting you all close. so much for yeah. your support hopefully we hit that within the next couple of weeks but uh, gonna be a fun one nonetheless myself and kyle will have you recap for the indianapolis 500 right after the race on sunday so make sure you come back for that but for this episode i've been lucas wacker he's been kyle cushman signing off for now we will talk to you very very soon and hopefully in glorious fashion after yet another great day of motorsports enjoy the indianapolis 500 and enjoy the coca-cola 600 everybody